Hey kids! Hey kids! Hey kids, thanks for checking out the Treehouse Takeover. Before you get watching, we wanted to tell you a little bit about what the Treehouse Takeover is. It's our online kids worship service filled with music, teaching, and all sorts of fun. Every week, we get to hear one of our family church kids pastors or ministers teach us a message from God's Word. Family Church is made up of a whole bunch of different campuses. And each one of those campuses has their own kids ministry. Run by their own kid pastor or minister and has their own kids who go each week. Kids who are just like you. Just like you. Just like you. This means that there are so many different people who care about you and want you to know the truths of God's Word. That's right. Every single one of our neighborhood churches has their own unique Treehouse Kids Worship Service. And you can be part of it. Check out your local neighborhood campus every single Sunday morning where you will get to experience live worship through music, teaching, and giving. You will get to see friends, memorize Bible verses, sing songs to Jesus and about Jesus, play games, and learn more about discovering and pursuing God's design for your lives. Parents, make sure to click the link in the bio to locate your nearest neighborhood church. We hope to see you real soon in person. But for now, enjoy watching the Treehouse Takeover. And remember, we love you. We love you. Que nosotros te amamos. We love you. But more importantly, God loves you more. God loves you more. God loves you more. Pero mucho más importante, Dios te ama más. Hey Christmas kids and welcome to the Treehouse. We are so glad that you joined us today. I'm so excited, Pastor Zach, about Christmas, mm, the lights, the mm, trees, the mm. cookies. But do you know what is the most special about Christmas? This sweater, of course. No, 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 no. Advent, which ah. means the arrival of an important person. You're right. You know, we're not talking about a celebrity or a famous sports player. We're celebrating the arrival of the most important person ever. Jesus, as we anticipate his birth at Christmas. You're right. Last week we learned about how we can have peace mm. because of Jesus. That's so true. And you know, I'm really looking forward to learning more about Advent. I think we should go check out Word of the Day. Yeah, come in. Let's go. Let's go. Christmas, everyone. Kenny, can you believe Christmas is almost here? I can't hardly wait. In all of the excitement and anticipation, how are you holding up? Well, Miss Dana, I've been keeping myself pretty busy with non-stop Christmas decorating in my house. My mom and me have put about 75 kabillion jillion lights on our house already. That's a lot. I'm pretty sure that you can see my house from outer space. I think it's an airline traffic control issue. That's definitely a lot of lights, Kenny. In all of your decorating adventures, did you remember to prepare our Advent Word of the Day? Oh, of course I remember, Miss Dana. Celebrating Advent is really important for our family. That's great to hear. Advent reminds us that Jesus, God's Son, came into our broken world in order to save us from our sin. But Advent isn't just about remembering that Jesus came as a baby. Advent is also helps us look forward to the time Jesus will come again to completely fix our broken world. And that's why I love celebrating Advent, Miss Dana. Hey, can I go ahead and share our Advent word of the day? Yeah, go ahead, Kenny. Okay, our Advent word of the day is joy. I love thinking about joy that Jesus brings, and Advent is a great way to celebrate that. Go ahead and help us understand more about what joy means for us during this Advent season. Yeah! The Bible's definition of joy is full 
satisfaction and gladness in God's goodness. Wow, what a powerful definition for joy. Remembering that Jesus came in order to save us from our sin fills our hearts and minds with great joy. He came to offer us new life with Him forever. And this means that because of Jesus, we have everything we will ever need. God proved how good He is by sending Jesus to rescue us. And one day He will keep His promise to make all things new when Jesus comes again to fix all that is broken in our world. God really is very good. And this fills our lives with gladness. Yeah, Miss Danny, thank you for that reminder today. Hey, you know what? It reminds me of one of my favorite Christmas songs. Oh, you oh you mean Joy to the World? Uh yeah, that one too. Thank you, Miss Danny, for all your help. See you all next time for the Advent Word of the Day. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive the King. Merry Christmas, kids. It's time for us to review our Merry Memory Verse. It's from Luke 2, 10 through 11. So I'm going to say it one time, and then we're all going to stand up together and say it two times with the motions. It's Luke 2, 10 through 11. And an angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. All right, kids, now stand up, and we're going to say it two times together with the motions. Luke 2, 10 through 11. And an angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. All right, kids, one more time with all your confidence. Here we go. Luke 2, 10 through 11. And an angel said to them, Fear not, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Great job, kids. Merry Christmas. There's a star
I mean, Mr. Steven, I really like that. Uh, what is that that you're wearing? This is a European Christmas scarf. It's very cultured. I'm sorry if I didn't have an ugly sweater like Lauren. Whoa, whoa, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. Really nice. I, I really think like that I have it. the most beautiful Christmas sweater that was ever invented. Uh, it is very beautiful. Thank you, Herman. I appreciate it. Oh, I love welcome. your bow. Oh, thank you. Is it nice? Makes you yes. look distinguished. It right? does. It does. I am having Tony, fun. Tony, why are hey, anything? Tony, I got some garland here. You want me to no. wrap some hey, garland around you? Get, get yeah, the garland. On, no, hey, no, no, no. Get that garland away from me. Get an enjoy the Christmas season, Tony. Yeah, enjoy you know yourself. What? I don't understand why you all are so joyful and happy. There's yeah. no thing to be happy about. It's Christmas time. Yeah. You can't not be joyful. Here, I think I know what will get you right in the Christmas spirit. Oh, no. Please you know don't what? Say it. You know what came out today? What came out? The newest episode of A Corny Christmas Carol. Oh, episode three. Can we watch it? Yeah, we should watch it. We should watch it. Okay, it's going to be on the TV now. I come on, come on, come on, let's watch it. Let's Alliteration watch. gives me joy. Well, 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 look who's back. I hope you are just as excited as I am to watch as Scrooge McCrow learns a little bit about the Christmas spirit. Last time, the subconscious of Christmas past showed him what he used to be like. He was holly, he was jolly, and he was in love with that sweet little ladybird. However, he gave up all of that and became a grumpy old Scrooge. It seemed like we are starting to get somewhere with him. Let's check in. I have another friend who's going to come to visit. Let's take a look at Scrooge's dream where he is still right now. Oh, I guess I'm still in my dream. Well, at least I have some peace and quiet here for once. Time, to me, time for me to dream up some money and some corn. Two of my very favorite things in the world. That's all I need. I don't need anyone else. Even though sometimes I miss my pretty girl, bird friend. Oh there, tone down the energy, you're at a 10, and I'm gonna need you to come down to a four. No can do, my friend, especially not when it's Christmas time. Wait a minute, who even are you? Please do not tell me you're another weird projection of my self-conscious again. I can't take any more unintentional self-reflection. Um, while you were saying all those big words, I decided to get you a present. You wanna see it? You know what, I'm not a big presents guy, actually, I'm not a big Christmas guy, so no thank you to the present. Well, too bad! Here you go! Whoa, you, you got me a phone. Wait a minute. I'm guessing that the phone is not for me. It's what's on the phone that's for you. Here, let's watch. While you were trying to make some money and sell your corn, your good friend Mr. Frog was getting ready to celebrate Christmas with family and friends. Check it out! As you can see, Mr. Frog does not have a whole lot to share. However, he and his closest friends and family are joyful because they know what's most important. It is not money. It's not possessions. It's not corn. Because of this, they can have a joyful Christmas in spite of their circumstances. Wait, how is that even possible? How can you possibly be happy without money, possessions, and corn? Hold on, this phone is heavy. be asking yourself, Scrooge McCrow, is whether you are the one who is joyful. It's easy to see why they are, but by the looks of it, you lack joy. And maybe you need to evaluate whether what you're doing is bringing you joy or none at all. Whoa, that is deep. Well, thank you for stopping by my dream, weird subconscious person. But I think it's time for you to go back wherever you came from. Sounds good to me. See you, Scrooge. Don't forget to seek joy. Joy, 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 joy. It seems like our crow friend is learning more about what it means to have true joy. The material items he possesses do not bring him true joy, yet he does not quite understand all of this just yet. I have one more idea, and this one is the one that will truly get through to him. Make sure to stop by again and take a look at what we will show Scrooge McCrow. See you then. Wow, that was, that was a great episode. Oh, 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 it's okay. Oh, no. I, I was a little itchy. Uh, but, okay, uh, uh, Tony, it. Tony, are you, uh, are you feeling a little more joyful mm -hmm. now? Well, if my calculations are correct, I'm about 
twenty-seven percent more joyful. Wait, wait, wait! So That's pretty good. Percent this week and last week, you were twenty-seven percent more peaceful. So Miss Lauren, help me out here. Carry the um, one, and you add the, the seven, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fifty-four. Oh, fifty-four percent. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Fifty-four percent. You're about halfway there, Tony. You're almost all the way in the Christmas spirit. Yeah, you could be smiling now. Yeah. Well, my, my, I, I can't smile. I'm a bird. My beak doesn't move that way. But it's I guess okay. you're right. It's okay. Oh, well, we're just glad you're, you're over the 50% mark. That's yeah. amazing. Can we be done with this? I'm getting like a rash. I think this is made out of beaver pelts, which well, is not ooh, good. That's very well, I'm allergic. It's well, all terrible. Well, I don't think that counts as a Christmas sweater, so you could have Come taken on. it off forever ago. Enough talking. Uh, let's go somewhere and do anything, please. All right, well, let's go. What? All right. Sure. <sighs> Three. What an interesting day in the treehouse when we watch Scrooge McCrow struggle with true joy. I keep thinking about the words that Happy said to him. He said, the real question you should be asking yourself, Scrooge McCrow, is whether you are the one who is joyful. It's easy to see why they are, but by the looks of it, you lack joy. And maybe you need to evaluate whether what you're doing is bringing you joy or none at all. Hmm. Well, this joy that we heard about reminds me of the coming birth of Jesus that we reflect on during the Advent season. Looking back in Luke 1, 46 to 56, we see a joyful passage of scripture that's called Mary's Song. You see, Mary had just visited her cousin Elizabeth and knew they were both going to have their babies around the same time. John the Baptist would be born to Elizabeth and Jesus would be born to Mary. When Mary sings this joyful song, she's not just sharing her thoughts with her cousin. She's saying that the Lord is great and her spirit is rejoicing with the news that has come to her. Let's listen to a few verses of Mary's joyful song in Luke 1 verses 46 to 49. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. So today, we light another candle in our Advent wreath, and we focus on the word of the day, joy. Joy is full satisfaction and gladness in God's goodness. Mary understood God's goodness in sending Jesus to be born. He's our rescuer, our savior, the only one who can take away all our sin. This truth is the only thing that can bring true and lasting joy in our lives. There's a lot of things that might make us feel happy for a short time, like video games, good grades, or a fun vacation. But these things don't last and don't bring true joy that lasts forever. Kids, Jesus was born on Christmas Day. He lived a perfect life and then died on the cross for all our sins. When we believe in him, we are forgiven. And we experience a joy that lasts forever. Maybe you've already received this true joy. Or maybe you're still learning what all of this means. Today might be the day you are done with looking for happiness in temporary things. And finally, finding the one true joy, Jesus. Like Mary, you might feel the same way she did in her song in Luke 1. You can also say, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Aren't you thankful that God sent a rescuer? I know I am. One day God will keep his promise to make all things new when Jesus comes again to fix all that's broken in our world. And that, my friends, is true joy. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful that you sent us joy in and through Jesus Christ. Thank you that he was born, that he grew up to live a perfect life, to die for us on the cross so that all our sins could be forgiven. Lord, thank you that we can have permanent and everlasting joy when we believe in you, 
we can spend an eternity with you in heaven. Help each child today to understand more and more what it is to me to believe in true joy in Jesus as their Savior. We love you and we thank you and we praise you for all these good things. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Wow, Pastor Joaquin, Miss Wendy did a great job reminding us that Jesus came to save us from our sins and that he can fill our hearts and our minds with great joy. He came to deliver us a new life with him forever. And this means that because of Jesus, we have everything we will ever need. You know, God proved how good he is by sending Jesus to rescue us. And one day he will keep his promise to make all things new when Jesus comes again to fix all that is broken in our world. You know, God is really very good. And this fills our lives with joy. You are right, Pastor Zach. Boys and girls, you can have that joy too by personally trusting in Jesus as your Savior, by believing that Jesus came to save us from our sins. Jesus took the punishment of our sins through his death, burial, and resurrection. If you had chosen that faith today, then we encourage you to share that choice with your parents mm. or your kids' pastors or ministers so we can help you to take that next step. It's really good, Pastor Joaquin. You know, kids, it's been great being the church together. Now let's go be the church out there. And don't forget, we love you. But more importantly, God, God loves, loves you more. more.